Fantastic. I'll let you jump into your slide deck and I'll see you afterwards. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'll start by putting on a few links there in the chat so that um, you can go ahead and, and look at the method yourself. And then there's some courses and free free and some paid and, and the Christmas discount of 25% um, of uh, some stuff that you might be interested in. But let's dive uh, deep into the topic. So what I'm going to talk today is, is about practical API strategy with API of cycles. So those of you who might have some uh, background in, in product management or management consulting or business design or something like that, you might have um, heard or seen or done um, kind of strategy work. And you might know that sometimes strategies are kind of planned from top down and sometimes they are kind of emerging from uh, down to top or iterating in the in between and, and the same is true with API strategy and my point here is to show a few examples of how to approach API strategy with API cycles from like a little bit more top-down approach and, and, and also a little bit more from the kind of emergent way of handling an API strategy and a little bit about me so my name is Marek Kanina. I'm from Helsinki, Finland, but it seems like I've been all over the world, uh, especially this year when it's so easy to travel all around the world. But I'm founding partner of Osang Unlimited uh, and local organizer of API Days Helsinki together with a global team. And we're having API Days Helsinki again in March about platforms and APIs and transforming industries. And then we also have API meetups, which hopefully be, will be growing up again uh, after this kind of COVID situation and, and we hopefully meet face to face. Uh, and then we have, we're doing consulting and a lot of training and I'm also co-author uh, of API Economy 101 book. And I hope to connect with you through LinkedIn and other medias uh, after this. So one of the things that I hear a lot, um, and I'm, I'm sure that all the API consultants in the audience probably do too, is that kind of help us create some guidelines for our API development. And this usually comes down when there are already a few APIs going on, or at least the, the need for many more has already been identified, but there is a, a need for extending the software or integration related um, kind of practices of software development into the area of API development. So this is kind of like one starting point where you can suddenly end up with the whole question of API strategy. And uh, this question is often the, the one that opens the whole Pandora's box of, of what's actually the stuff that needs to be done, which might come as a surprise. And that's why in, in Osango, we kind of looked it, into this at, at um, one point and saw that, okay, well, there are these APIs and, and the kind of software development, but actually you need to think about the data, the organization, the touch points in customer journeys. And you have to kind of have this method and, and this framework of handling this. And, and before I, I founded Osang, I was working in, in a consultancy and uh, we had a lot of issues with customers. And before that, I was with, working with a lot of teams in retail and, and uh, SaaS and so forth. And there you started to see that APIs needed their own solution. And APIs, dealing with APIs was dealing with product management and everything that goes around product management. And it's not only software, but the whole way of people and software and, and different um, like business and technology people working together and understanding each other. So API Ops, when developed, was actually trying to solve the collaboration problem between business and tech. So the collaboration problem is due to language issues. It's due to uh, different methods of working and um, 
like, okay, you, you have people who have never heard of agile or lean practices. You have people who have never heard of software development per se, or, or you have people who have a lot of software development experience, but no API experience or product managers who are very skilled at product management, but don't know how APIs translate into being a product. And this was the, the thing that we tried to solve. And APIs cycles uh, is, is using this kind of very lean approach, but also technology agnostic approach and industry agnostic approach to trying to kind of give you some idea of the process and methods of how to design business oriented and uh, good developer experience and security and all the all the nice things that you have to have um, and also API manage, uh, management compatible APIs which is actually a big thing in itself in the API productization and these phases uh, are supported by different canvases and checklists and design guidelines. And often you end up using API of cycles when you need to design like one API or one area of APIs. But actually what you can do is use them to kind of cover um, uh, or, or kind of dig out the strategy needs too. So once you start working with one set of APIs, you often end up having these big questions to answer or big direction to kind of set. And that is an interesting thing uh, that API op cycles and these canvases can help you do in a uh, quite fast and, and quite collaborative way. So basically service design and design thinking and, and some other methods are also kind of com coming up to this. And, and typical methods that you would use in product management. So in product management, you often use value proposition canvas and, and, and uh, as a starting point, and this is uh, the reason why API cycles also starts from that or starts from a customer journey often, but, but uh, then the next thing is the, to go to the uh, product management side and start with a value prop. So one thing that, um, uh, we did, for example, this autumn was to help a, a big kind of public sector organization um, to, well, the, the whole story started from we need a customer API. We have this theorem system and, and a lot of stuff going around it, but we need a customer API. And our case is so complex that it's not easily solvable and we need some guidelines on how to solve this and how to decide and design uh, API things in general. So we want kind of general guidelines, but specifically to the customer API. And then when we started workshopping that with the API cycles, it kind of uh, like covered up um, a lot of issues <laughs> that were related, like the, the term customer API actually was a, a um, umbrella of things. So it actually started going through the whole CRM, like how is the CRM being used? Because we can't obviously design a customer API if we don't have an idea how this customer API will be used and also how it relates to the whole kind of CRM strategy, how customer data will be used and managed and where it's stored and all of those questions. And then it also goes to the whole customer experience strategy. So how are customers kind of managed as a whole and, and what is the level of customer experience that this organization wants to achieve? And so this is kind of doodle <laughs> underneath this um, stairwell, uh, stairwell here is pretty much the real process that happens. So you first start with like, okay, customer API, what do we need to build customer API? Um, and then you start going like, okay, well, this starts to look, lo look like that we have a bunch of questions that leads us to the CRM strategy. Do we have one? Um, is it good? Is it kind of giving us answers? And then to the customer experience strategy and then back to the customer API and possibly some other iterations again. And this is often happening when you start with like IT people only, like you start with a very technical approach to let's say customer API. 
And then you start realizing and realizing that you need more and more business people in it. And that's where APR Cycles is trying to kind of lead you to take the right people in at the right time. And the bottom line is that you can't really build an API strategy without thinking about the ecosystem journeys and experience, or at least the immediate customer journeys and, and the value propositions that your API uh, fits into within that journey. Of course, a very good API is, is potentially usable in multitude of journeys and multitude of experiences. But you have to identify at least a few. And for example, in this particular case with the customer or the contact and customer API, we actually started identifying at least three different journeys or three different main journeys that kind of loop together from a lead, uh, a prospect that wasn't identified yet into a authenticated user, into a verified user. Um, and, and there were also kind of uh, situations where the verified user had to still behave like uh, a lead or a marketing user in, in new services. And, and a lot of things were going on and we had to identify the points in the journey where we actually need this customer API or customer related APIs. So in this journey, for example, uh, there is, this is a more of a retail or, or an e-commerce journey, but there could be like different APIs in different journeys and the same API can of course be used in multiple journeys. And so here we have an example of the API value proposition canvas. And let's say that we have just mapped this journey here. And then um, obviously in a more detailed way, but anyway, and, and then we put the journey in here uh, with the tasks. So the, the column A here and, and kind of start listing things here. Uh, what are the things that actually need to happen in this particular journey? And then we start to think about, okay, if we need to do these tasks as, as a software development team, for example, developing a um, user interface using these APIs. So what are the gains that we are hoping to have by using this API? And what are the, the pains that we expect to have when um, starting to use this API? And the pains often are a collection of a lot of technical things, but also a lot of business things. But basically, what are the pains and gains from the point of view of those developers or the organization that needs to use the potential APIs? So you start from here so that you can actually get the product requirements from your customers, uh, which are always usually a little bit surprising, like not exactly what you thought that as a provider you should provide. Um, so this is an important thing to start from the customer expectations. So both the end customer and, and the developer customer who is actually using the APIs. And then you start mapping these gain creators and pain relievers and, and thinking about the features of your APIs and services that actually provide these gains and these pains. And then you start mapping them into services here in the F column. But here, for example, in the real case that we had, we actually had this problem of like, we actually ended up uh, having three different uh, custom APIs uh, related to the different levels of, kind of security and verification that uh, were happening in each of the cases, because the the customer API, or like it's it's kind of a dangerous term, but the customer API usually never is just a customer API because you might have companies, you might have contact persons, but what makes a customer a customer is a relationship to some kind of a service uh, or product or or transaction that ties them into the relationship with the organization. And the, the important thing is to understand that with a customer API, you usually have to tap into that relationship too, and not just the basic details. And here in this example, we had just, you know, this is a very simplified example, not the actual, like this uh, from another case actually, but um, here you can see that there are very kind of 
specific technical or, or detailed kind of um, attributes of a customer conduct that are much, but in a more advanced case, you would have this kind of what are the preferences of this customer? What are the services related to this customer? What are the, the business transactions? And uh, so, so this is the, the one step. And then you kind of pick out the APIs one by one um, and start creating kind of this business model uh, around them. So even if it's an internal API and an internal API strategy, then you still have different um, consumer segments and different benefits or even revenue from them. And you have to kind of make sure that you think about the model here, business model or otherwise operational model, and, and then productize uh, related to that model. Then uh, from that on, you start going to the technology planning or like the, the requirements in more detail and you think about business impacts so that you actually know which things are going to be answered by the API strategy and what are kind of what is the overall service strategy. So, for example, if the customer uh, API doesn't work, is it going to be mitigated with a technical solution or is it going to be mitigated with a phone call to the customer uh, service or support or something else? And Sometimes, you know, the risks that are related are PR risks. Sometimes it's like GDPR um, violation, or sometimes it's something worse. Somebody dies if the API uh, works incorrectly. So you have to think about what are the business impacts and what are the risks per API and various other things that this uh, method is guiding you to think about and discuss specifically with the business people in a language and in a way that they are able to understand and contribute to because these are business decisions after all. And so just to say uh, in the previous presentations in other API days and other, other uh, forms this year, I've been showing this water services example, which is kind of more of a top-down uh, model of doing um, API strategy. So we were working with some, some water services organizations and, and they had like, uh, let's build an app um kind of a an idea and then we started looking at it more thoroughly and, and understanding that hey actually um this is not a let's build an app thing and which cloud is the best cloud but it's more like what are what is your service strategy what is your actual uh thing that you as an organization do and what can other other organizations do and should do and how it would work with apis and it started with the overall goals and then it kind of went into the whole strategy of what are the, the services, strategy of the water services ecosystem. And actually here, the, the idea was that it looked like we started top down, but actually it was again, uh, more down to top because from the pains of a couple of water services organizations, we actually went to the whole water related strategy of Finland as a country and the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Forestry. So, so, um, and I, I still don't know where exactly my slides end up ended up uh, into, but that that's how it started to go forward. So, anyway, the point is that put the APIs into the right context and think about your API strategy and your your kind of the impact of that to your business strategy. Often there are some paths that you can find to the business strategy from thinking of, of things from an ecosystem and API point of view. Build partnerships, build the right APIs and build them the, in the right way. That's the whole goal of the API cycles method and also kind of to remove the eight ways of lean um, and to help you to do the right things in, in a suitable amount of time and not do things in a waterfall way, but still suitably uh, using DevOps and, and other lean methodologies with APIs. So remember the collaboration, remember a little bit of diversity and also the different business and technology aspects to the team. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them now, or you can go to the apipcycles.com site 
uh, or to osango.academy, which is our online school where you can get self-service uh, training or uh, training where you can ask, ask our experts. And we even have some open university uh, courses there in English, Chinese and German at the moment. Very French is not available, but there's the code that you can get the discount with. So, Mark, I'm... Mayuka, thank you that for a, a great introduction to the API Ops Cycles approach and how you can just sort of use it. I love that it's also um, uh, it's um, Creative Commons available as well. So you, people can sort of pick it up and feel confident that they can add it into their internal yeah. slide decks or whatever. Yep. The, and then the, you were also saying uh, water ecosystems, not waterfalls. Yeah, water, water ecosystem is, is uh, the kind of pure water service. And, and, yeah. and we'll avoid the waterfall methodology instead. The, yeah. So, yeah. so then how much do you know, like with, with something like that? So let's take that as an example or, or you know, maybe there's another um, industry example where, so how are they thinking about, um, so you talk a little bit about the, um, the design centric nature and, you know, focusing on the customer and that sort of thing. Then, pardon me, when you're thinking about ecosystems, how are people making that leap to be thinking about that new generation of products? That might be available from using APIs and yeah. and, and meeting customer needs. Often, um, that often that's a challenge for enterprises to think creatively like that. How do yeah. you get them to get that to get the juices flowing there? So basically, typically, and and for example, in this particular case of the water services, I uh, well, I have to give them a picture and there's actually a whole collection of, of stuff that, there that um, can, you can find if you attended New York or, or um, yeah, it was New York actually, or Helsinki this year in API days. Uh, but the idea is that you kind of build this ecosystem up and then you start think, uh, using the API cycles in terms of like, okay, if this is the part, like for example, they really, like after we, uh, go through the we want an app discussion <laughs> then uh the, the the bottom line was that they wanted to collect water consumption data and they wanted to serve it up to their customers and and for their internal systems and stuff so when you get to the bottom of it why are you like wanting to build an app or, or do something then you can take that and and start mapping it out we had this whole like uh more detailed journey for example from a, an infrastructure or building uh, company's point of view and and the whole life cycle of a building and we are doing some other cases with building uh related stuff too and you have this life cycle of a building and then you start looking at okay these parts these tasks in the journey are not covered yet with anything or with a good solution. And then you start taking those tasks into the value prop map, and then you start innovating and, and, and you start innovating with going through what the customers or the, the partners are wanting or what you know that they are wanting or you interview them or do various other things. And you start from the customer or partner need and then you start figuring out what to serve or what to build for that need. That usually leads into innovation more often than the other way around, that you think that we as an organization want to do this, this, or this, or need to do this, this, and this, because you're stuck in your thinking, and then there's probably no room for innovation or the right kind of innovation. Yeah, that's fascinating. That's fantastic. And then just these sorts of... um. Eco, even at this level, this sort of ecosystem map helps get those sorts of thoughts um, triggered, and yeah, and then the research, and that you've you, you've got to do the outreach to your yeah. to your segments and everything. Okay, wonderful. We've got to press on. We've got um, Emmanuel coming up now, so um, thank you, Mayuka. And there's a great and deal. If anybody um, has any questions, please don't feel uh, like contact me or.